Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. We thank God for your presence here this evening. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God, that you've allowed these, your humble souls, to gather one more time in your name. So, Lord God, we ask by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that you will come in and make this Bible study be what you would have it to be. Holy Spirit, lead us and we will follow. Holy Spirit, teach us and we shall be taught. It is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. A good God bless you tonight. A continuation from the lesson on last week where we talked about walking in the Spirit. And, and we talked about what does that look like? What does that actually mean? Many times we say things in church and we we hear things and we and, and we hear folk repeat it over and over, walk in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. What actually does that mean? What does that look like? What in context of the Bible, in context of my life, in context of what is going on and all around us, what does that mean? And so we begin the lesson on, on last week talking about when you say uh, walking in the Spirit, are you talking about the fruits of the Spirit? Or the gifts of the Spirit. And we want to kind of look back at that one more time to reiterate that because exactly what do we mean? Exactly what are we talking about? But tonight we want to look at what we call fruit of the Spirit. Let's, let's look at this. Again, what is the difference between the gifts of and the fruits of the Holy Spirit? What, what is the difference again? The gifts and the fruits of the the Holy Spirit. Again, the gifts, various gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit have to do with a person's spiritual capabilities for service of God. The gifts of the Spirit instantly for a purpose of ministry. And so, and so again, the gifts of the Spirit talks, it really talks about the spiritual capabilities of one to do service for the Lord. That's why he gave you those gifts to serve him. That's why he gave you a gift in service of him for the body of Christ. Your abilities to serve him, abilities to serve those around you, abilities to serve the body. That's what the gifts of the spirit are for. Now, gifts, fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit has to do with what? A person's spiritual characteristics, who you are in Christ, in the body. The fruit developing gradually as a believer aids in Christ, abides, I'm sorry, abides in Christ and yields to the working of the Holy Spirit. One more time. The fruit is developed gradually as a believer abides in Christ and yields to the working of the Holy Spirit. So it is your spiritual characteristics. That's what fruits of the Spirit are. One more time, here it is. The gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, spiritual capabilities. The fruit of the Spirit, spiritual characteristics. And so tonight we want to look at what? The fruit of the Spirit. It's found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22. Through 23. Fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Fruit of the Spirit, love. Seek the highest good of others. You want to see love. You want to be able, when you look at folk, you want to see the best in them. You want to have love for them, and, you, and they have love for you. You must have love. For, Jesus says, How will I know my disciples? because they have love one for another. And so you want to see the good in everybody, see the love in folk. Those are, those, are, those, are, those are spiritual characteristics, to see love in folk. And, to, and, to, and, and because I want you to understand, folk, that, that, that the Bible lets us know in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. And so if you have love, you have God. If you have God, you have love for your brothers and for your sisters. Joy. Gladness that is not based on circumstances. Oh my goodness. 
You, you know what your grandmama took. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Joy is how to do it, what's going on around us. It is because your joy comes from God in our relationship with him. Remember, remember, you get these, these fruits of the spirit by abiding in Christ gradually as we grow, abiding in him. And when you abide in him, you get joy, you get love, and you get peace. Peace, contentment, and unity between people, between each other. It is amazing that the contentment, the peace that you can get if when you have, when you abide in Jesus. There's a contentment that you can't find any place else. That when his peace rests upon your life, when he abides in you and you abide in him, you get his peace. That, that's my prayer for us, that, that we abide in Christ, that his peace rests upon you. Because I came by the, I want you to understand and know that, that, that you, can, you can spend $10,000 on a bed, $5,000 on a mattress, but if you don't have peace, you cannot rest at night. It is the peace of God. It is the peace through, through Jesus Christ that you can lay your head and sleep. That's why you can see a little baby that can, that can rest anyway, that can fall asleep anyway, and especially when it's in his mother's arm. He's at peace or she's at peace when she's laying in her mother's arm. I want you to rest tonight. Rest in his peace. Lay in his arms tonight. Patience. Other texts it says long suffering. Slow to speak and slow to anger. We must have patience with one another. And the Bible again tells us that's what, how we grow. If we, we must have, aren't you glad that God had patience with you? I'm so glad that he had patience with me to allow me to grow, allow me to even to make mistakes, to stumble and fall, but yet he still was there with his arms wide open. Patience, kindness, merciful, sweet and tender. Again, those are the gifts, the, 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 the fruit of the spirit that you get by abiding in him. It's so wonderful to be kind to people. Aren't you glad that he's merciful to us? That he's sweet and kind and tender. Then goodness, generous and open heart. Another gift that you get from the Lord. Another fruit of the spirit that you get from him. Generous and open hearted. God says, I will withhold no good thing from you. We get that by abiding in him. Faithfulness, dependable, loyal, and full of trust. God needs us in his kingdom. He needs us in his believers. He needs us to be faithful. He needs us to be dependable. He needs us to be loyal. He needs us to be full of trust. Can God trust you to be blessed? Can he trust you with his gifts? Are you dependable? Can God call on you? Can, can your brothers or your sisters call on you? Can, are you dependable? Are you loyal? Or, or will something happen and you just fall away? I, 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 I'm not, I, I don't care about anybody more. I'm going to stop going to church. I, I don't want to bother with them people. I don't, I don't want to speak to the pastor. I don't want to talk to anybody. Are you dependable and loyal to the body? Gentleness. Humble. Um, and what? Non-threatening. Can we be gentle with each other? Do we have humility that is lost so much in the body of Christ? He says, he says, if you want to walk with him, you have to be humble. You have to be meek. You have to be mild. And self-control. Behaving well. Self-control, behaving well, not, not only just in our speech, but in our body, in our, in our, and, and it's going to talk about it even more, in this flesh. Can you control this body? Can you control your flesh? Behaving well. And so, and so there, there, it is, there it is again. Fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let's move a little further. 
the fruit of the Spirit. Like all fruit, the fruit of the Spirit grows out of its roots, which are the characteristics of God. In the same way, a tree is designed to be a dwelling place for fruit. You are created to be a dwelling place for the Spirit of God. I want to. I want to. I want. I, I want to say that again. I, I need to say that again. You were created to be what a dwelling place for the Spirit of God. Dwell in me. Live in me, Jesus. Move through me. Speak through me. I want to be the dwelling place for the Spirit of God. Without Him in your lives, things quickly get out of hand as your flesh dictates your behavior. And that's what we were talking about. Be careful. Don't let our flesh dictate our behavior. Fruit as a symbol. John the Baptist teaching to the Pharisees and Sadducees in, in Matthews 3 and 8. As an example of this, therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Fruit symbolizes the consequences and, and, and product of repentance. Number one, the fruit of repentance toward God is, among other things, a change of attitude toward him and his law. Number two, it represents one's disobedience to his words to a, to obedience. Number three, it may also indicate a change of status and relationship from sin, son, son of Satan to the son of God. This is what Jeremiah has to say about it. Jeremiah 6 and 19. Here you earth. I'm bringing disaster on those people, the fruit of their schemes, because they do not listen to my word and have rejected my law. Bad fruit brings on disaster. My pastors would tell me many years ago that surely we you don't judge people. We can't judge people. We don't always understand what's going on. But you can judge fruit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? And I'm going to say it before again at the end. What kind of fruit are we bearing? If someone was to, 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 to bring your name up, when it's all said and done, what will you be known by? What kind of fruit will you be known by? What kind of fruit do we bear? The text lets us know that, that the fruit comes from the root of the tree that bears it. Well, who are you rooted in? What are you rooted in? Are you rooted in love, kindness, patience, long-suffering, gentleness? What are we rooted, rooted in? What kind of fruit are we bearing? Apple trees bear apple. Lemons bear lemons. If you're rooted in love, love will be your fruit. And it'll be all around you. Calamity is an effort. Calamity is an effect that the fruit of evil thoughts. The lesson is clear. Calamity is a sort of beginning with evil thoughts, proceeding to evil actions, producing bitter and painful experiences for self and others. Bad fruit. Why not strive to avoid the bitter fruit, evil thoughts produced by change of our thoughts to good? Galatians 6 and 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mock. For whatever a man soweth, this also he reaps. Paul is it's it's saying that whatever if 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 you sow bad seed if, if you if you sow bitterness if you if you sow pain if if you sow anger that's what you will reap. But if you sow love, love will come up. If you sow kindness, kindness will come up. If you sow patience, patience will come up. 
Romans 6, 21, 22. What benefits you reap at the time from the things that you are now ashamed of? For those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin, and have become slaves of God. The benefits you reap lead to holiness and result in eternal life. Fruit from the enemy, fruit from the devil, results in death. What you reap and what you sow in God results in eternal life. Bearing good fruit. That's who we are as children of the Most High God. We are to bear good fruit. We are to produce good fruit. The Bible shows producing good fruit has other specific causes God calls us to do. It shows it. Let's look at let's let's look at Romans 7 verses 4 through 6. So, my brothers and my sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you may belong to another. To him you have were raised from the dead in order that they may be what? Bear good fruit for God. You were born again. You were saved. You were delivered. That you may what? Bear good fruit for God. For when we were what? In the realm of the flesh and the sinful passions are aroused by the law that had worked in us. So we what? We what? We bore fruit of death. But now, by dying to one once was bound to us, we have been what? Released from the law so that we serve to a new way of the spirit and not to the old way according to a code. You what? You were raised with him. You were blessed by him. You were saved by him that you might would bear fruit from God. For God, where are your fruit? Where is your fruit? I, Romans 1, 13 and 15. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I have planned many a times to come to you, but have been what prevented from doing so until now, in order that I may have a harvest among you, just as I have what? Paul says, I want to come and see the harvest. It should have been a harvest among you. I, I want to see you all grow. I want to see you all get better. I want to see what you all have been doing. Not just, not just adding to your numbers, but, 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 but is there some spiritual growth there? How have you been? He says, I'm obligated both Greek and non-Greeks, both wise and foolish. That is why I am eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. The fruit he wanted to see produced was not just new converts. Philippians 4 and 17. And I love to talk about this. I love this one. Where Paul instructs the congregation to which he felt especially close to help explain this. Let's look at this. He says, not to seek gifts, but to seek the fruit that abounds to your account. What Paul was saying, many times we will quote this later. It says, says God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. This is what Paul was talking about. Paul said, I want to be able to put something on, on your account that you've been doing for God because Paul wants us to know that only what you do for Christ will last. Where is your fruit? Only what you do for the master shall last. The Bible also lets us know that whatever you do for him, over him will follow him over, follow you over into glory. Your works will go with you. He said, I want to be able to put something on your account. 
Paul says, not that, that I want you to Paul says, I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to be a bound. Paul says, I've learned how to be, be full. I've learned how to be without. But, but he says, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I want to see what you've done so I can put it on your account. Oh, what a blessing it is when you can talk and you can pray and you can preach about somebody that says, this is what they've done in the body of Christ. This is how they bless folks. This is their fruit that you can add it to their account. Paul says it's a sweet smelling aroma. Because many times folk love to quote this text and say, the Lord will supply all of my needs according to riches and glory, but they have no fruit. See, Paul is talking about those who he says, I wish I could come to you. He says, because, I, because you've been blessing me. You've been blessing the church. You've been blessing the ministry. You've been blessing the minister. You've been blessing those bodies, those around you. That's why God is gonna, gonna bless you. But where is your fruit? Have we blessed anybody but, but just other, other than this, just our family? Where is our fruit? Paul says he wants us to know that you are saved, that you may bear fruit in the kingdom. Paul yields, yearns that they produce fruit through good works so that they can receive the benefit. One more time, I need us to understand this. That's why we're just not just to sit there. Because the Bible says that when we, on them last days, he's gonna open up a book, the book of life and also the book of our works. What have we done? Where is our fruit? I don't know about you, but I don't wanna stand before him in my last days and not, and not have any fruit to show him. One more time, Paul yearns that they may produce fruit through their good works so that they can receive the benefits. The fruits added what? To their account. Thus, producing good fruit requires what? We're going to talk about, but, 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 but do you have anything on your account? Do you have any good fruit on your account? It's all of our job. That's what I, I, I my job is to make sure that my account looks right. Your job is to make sure your account looks right. Don't worry about anybody else's account. Make sure you do the work that God has called you to do. And all of us have work to do. All of us must bear fruit. Paul's job, he says, my job is to make sure that I preach the gospel. Pure and sure. Stand on fat footed on the word of God. But he says, he says that all of us, even those, he says, now I want to come back and see the fruit. Number one, sound instructions from a qualified teacher, that's Acts. The word of God, the Holy Spirit, the believer, repent his mind and applying the instruction. And then Paul says, John, I want to talk about bearing much more fruit. See, see, let me tell you about God. See, God, God just because you make one or two apples, he, he wants a bush. And when you get through making some apples, he wants some oranges. As you get some oranges, he wants some grapes. See, keeping up with God, it, you, you ain't going to sleep. You, you, I mean, it, there, is no, there is no such thing as mediocrity when you're dealing with God. God looks for excellence. Every morning, God wants you to do something, give something, be something. I want to see the fruit. Because God has expected something from us. And God, because he had given us great expectations upon our life. He expects us to bear fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Bearing much fruit. John 15 and 1. Jesus began a message using a grapevine as his illustration. He concludes with the starting up verses 8. Verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will what be my disciple. He said, now look, now look, now look, now look, now look. Look what the text says. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to it again. Let's, 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 let's. My Father is glorified. The Father is glorified. That what you what bear much fruit. You blessing God, you blessing the Lord. My Father is glorified that you will bear much fruit. So you will what 
be my disciples. That's why Jesus tells us over and over, let your look light shine before men that we glorify the Father which is in heaven. When you bear fruit, much fruit, you glorify the Father. Here it is, John 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give you. I needed to put this together because I hear this, I hear this all the time. Whatever you ask in my name, it's in my Father, the Father will give it to you. But look what comes before it. He says this, that you should what, go and what, bear fruit and that what and that your fruit shall remain that when it's all what is your legacy what are we leaving behind what kind of fruit when it's all said and done when this life is over down here what fruit shall remain what is the word that they will say about us? What kind of fruit will they say we left? What is it peace? Was it harmony? Was it love? What kind of fruit? Was it meekness? Was it patience? Was it love? What kind of fruit will they say we left? Or was it bad fruit that we left? We were argumentative, stirring up stuff. Always had something going on. Hard to deal with hard to work with, wouldn't work with you. What kind of fruit? What kind of fruit should remain? And so, as I close this lesson, I want to ask you tonight, are you bearing fruit of the Spirit? What, what, are you bearing fruit of the spirit of what kind of because, because only those who abide in Christ can bear his fruit the text lets us know that that those that, 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 that abide in the enemy abide in the devil have their fruit also are we bearing fruit of the spirit are we bearing love are we bearing joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control are we bearing fruit and lastly ask ourselves what kind of fruit are we bearing will it be fruit of repentance will it be fruit that will last will it be fruit that when we open up the lamb's book of life and we open up the book of our works. Will it remain? Will it follow us over into glory? Because I want us to know only what we do for Christ shall last. Let's bear good fruit. It's in us. Because if we're in Christ, the Bible says that, and we abide in him and he abides in us. As we grow, we bear fruit. And then we bear much fruit. Because whatever fruit you bear, Guess what? Now they begin to bear fruit. Much fruit is in us because Christ is in us. I, I know I'm watching some fruit bearers tonight. I, I feel it in my spirit. Let's bear fruit. Let's bear fruit. If there be one tonight who does not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of his sins, it starts with him. You must ask that he abide in you and you abide in him. If you have not known Jesus Christ in the pardon of his come now and give your life to the master. Say, Lord God, I have sinned against you. Jesus, come into my heart and 
save me. Church, I am a living witness that he'll do it. He will look past your faults and see your needs. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. He'll come into your heart and let him know, I will be a believer. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to follow your holy word and I'm going to bear fruit. We thank God for our virtual members tonight. Those who have been watching, those who have been sharing. We thank God for those virtual food prayers tonight. We thank God for those who have given them all week long from Sunday to now. We, we bless your offering all week long. We thank God for you. We pray that God will pull you out a blessing that you're not able to receive. And the overflow is for those who are around you. The, the, what he given you when your fruit basket flows over is for those who are around you. We thank you. And there may, there, there may be someone who, who has not a church home. We offer Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. Surely we're not a perfect church, but, but a church that is striving for perfection. Come and grow with us. And as we grow, we'll bear fruit together. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God, for these fruit bearers who come tonight. We thank you, Father God, for what you place inside of us, that we abide in you and you abide in us. And as we grow and bear fruit and much more fruit, that when it's all said and done, you will say, well done, that good and faithful servants. Look what you brought to the kingdom. Look how you've blessed God. Look how you've glorified the Lord through your work. And Father God, we ask that you bless the offering this day. Bless those, Father God, who, who gave, made the decision. I want to be, I want to be a member of this body of Christ. Thank you, Father God, for those who specially made the decision that, that I yield, I yield. I can't hold out no longer. I want to be a Christian in my heart. We thank you now. It is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. A good God bless you. We thank God for, for you all tonight. We're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Oh, by, by the way, uh, this Saturday at, at 9.30, we have our, our church school fun day for the young people. It'll be, it'll be grilling out. It'll be games. It'll be fun. So, so bring all your children. You don't have to be a member of the church. Just be in the community. Just bring the children. We have abundance of food that will be here. So come and bring them. We're going to have slides. We're going to have uh, jump councils. It is going to be a fun day for the church school. Amen. So bring them and experience the love of Christ among the believers. And then on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we'll charge thought with church school. We'll look forward to seeing you here at Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church right here on Jerry Bray Road. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.